now we're good. It was a small picture, but it approached perfection. Uh, although offered a high price for it on many occasions, uh, John Sargent refused to sell it. He considered it his best work and was very proud of it. Whenever he was deeply discouraged and doubtful of his abilities as an artist, he would look at it and remind himself, I painted that. Then his confidence and ability would come back to him. Wow, wow, wow. And so here we go uh, for our discussion tonight, for your consideration for our discussion. How do you handle discouragement? What is your practice for dispelling discouragement? How do you handle discouragement? What is your practice for dispelling discouragement? I, I'll start I'll start the ball rolling, um, hopefully to, to inspire you to share yours as well. Uh, and so um, one of the things that I do um, for dispelling discouragement is I like to sing songs. Um, that's one of the reasons why I was playing them old hymns tonight, because um, there is, for me, I don't know about for you, but for me, there's something about uh, hearing those old hymns, singing them, that is soothing to my soul. Uh, it is soothing to my spirit. It is um, it is a way where my spirit is disquieted. It is a way uh, to bring me uh, back into some semblance of balance. How about you? How do you handle discouragement? What is your practice for dispelling discouragement? Y'all talk to me tonight. Not everybody at once. For me, I'm going to say, to listen to worship music. Lord Kim's mind is worship. All right. First Lady Kim says she listens to worship music. All right. How do you handle discouragement? What is your practice for dispelling discouragement? Sometimes I get discouraged and I can't do something right away. Mm -hmm. Or if I do it today and then it, I can't do it tomorrow for some reason or another, I get discouraged. But um, I, I hum, I don't sing it all the time, but I hum day that way. Ah, okay. So I have to wait. Okay. All right. Okay, all right. Deaconess Libby says she hums day that way. Let me see. Denise said reading positive affirmations. Like it. Sandy Reynolds says I try to participate in activities that bring me joy or make me happy. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like. Hey, Sandy, would that be roller skating? I'm just. I'm just. I'm just curious. Would that be roller skating? <laughs> Sister Emily, Deaconess Emily said, pray for a better time to come. Brenda Jones, read positive, inspirational messages like that, like that, like that. Good responses on Facebook. Y'all keep them coming. How do you handle discouragement? Oh, Sandy said not anymore. Okay. Uh, how do you handle discouragement? What is your practice for dispelling discouragement? How do you get out of the doldrums? Yeah. Yeah. How do you get out of the doldrums? How do you pull yourself out? Anybody else want to share? Okay. Sister May says she talked to her sisters. I like it. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, all right. Let me see. Miss Diddy says, sit on the porch in the early morning hours and just enjoy. I like that, Miss Diddy. I like that. Let me see. Lucinda Bean said, I talk to my daughter. She helps me. And the old songs help me. All I know. I knew Lou was going to say that. I knew that, boy. Lulu was, she'll send me an old song in a heartbeat. I love it. I love it. I love it. Matter of fact, she be standing in Walmart sometimes just be singing. She just be singing them old songs. I love it. I love it. How do you handle discouragement? What is your practice for dispelling discouragement? Um, I'm I'm going to push forward. Thank you guys so much for your uh, responses here. Um, listen, though we may have uh, we may have preferred ways of bringing ourselves out of the depths of discouragement. Uh, there is a method that we can all employ, and that is. Thankfulness. I see responses just came in on Facebook Live. Gloria Morton says, I tell myself and remind myself 
that trouble don't last always and believe it. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right. So watch this. There is something that all of us can do. Miss Barbara said, turn it over to Jesus. Uh, there's something that we all can do. And watch this. There's a method that we can employ. And that method is called, get this, thankfulness. Mm -hmm. During times of discouragement, take the opportunity to express thanks to God and watch the clouds of despair dissolve. When you are deep in discouragement, I want to help us tonight. When you are deep in discouragement, watch this. The, you know, there's there's a there's an old idiom that says every cloud has a silver lining, right? I'm not a, I'm not suggesting that you look for a silver lining. What I'm suggesting is is that in spite of the discouragement that you may be experiencing in that moment, despite that, find a reason to tell God thank you. You got it? <coughs> I promise you, I promise you that if you begin to practice this, it will shift your whole attitude. It, watch this. Even if it is just for that moment, it'll shift your attitude. David's life was rife with emotional challenges. Rife, R-I-F-E. That's a great word. David's life was rife with emotional challenges. His writings in the Psalms reveal the range of emotions that he experienced. Psalm 3, the first Psalm which is attributed to David is categorized as a personal lament, a personal lament. It was written after he had fled Jerusalem when his son Absalom took over the throne. And you'll find that in 2 Samuel uh, chapters 15 through 18, all right? And of course, I don't have all them chapters up here tonight. Uh, King David and his attendants had crossed the Jordan River and camped at Mahanaim, all right? Mahanaim, the only reason I know that is because I passed my class this uh, this spring, all right? Uh, Mahanaim, Mahanaim, all right? And this is where, uh, this is where um, they perhaps uh, lifted uh, this song. Verse five of Psalm three indicates that this is a morning song. And that's, that would be, morning as in time of day all right it is a morning song uh let's let me let me let me pull up verse five very quickly here verse five says uh offer oh that's that's four uh here we go i lie down and sleep i wake again see that because the lord sustains me get this it is a good practice to begin your day with thankfulness. Y'all got it? It's good practice to begin your day with thankfulness. And so here we go. We found ourselves now at the meat of our lesson tonight. Uh, and I can, I can assure you that we will probably only get through verses one and two, but I'll do my best. So here we go. Psalm 3. Thankfulness in times of discouragement. Thankfulness in times of discouragement. This psalm has a superscription, a psalm of David when he fled from his son, Absalom. All right. Lord, how my foes increase. They are many who attack me. Many say about me, there is no help from him. I'm sorry, there is no help for him in God, Selah. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain, Selah. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. 
I will not be afraid of thousands of people who have taken their stand against me on every side. Rise up, Lord. Save me, my God. You strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. May your blessing be upon your people. Selah. All right, that is Psalm 3. All right, let me go back. Let me just see uh, what, what, what your remember is doing. All right, uh, what is the purpose of the superscription? All right. It tells us it tells us what the what the writing is about. Very good. Deaconess Andrew gets a gold star tonight. All right. Uh, the superscription tells us what the writing is about. All right. And we just read it. What is this writing about? When David fled from Absalom. When David fled from Absalom. All right. Now. To review the backstory of King David and Absalom, please see, we said it already, 2 Samuel chapters 15 through 18, all right, for the backstory. We're not doing the backstory tonight. We're not the backstory boys tonight, all right? Three times, <laughs> three times in this psalm, the word Selah is you, Selah. Selah is a musical term, which means pause, all right? Its purpose here is to allow those reading or singing the psalm to quietly reflect upon what has just been spoken. Y'all got it? So what does Selah mean? Means pause, pause and reflect, pause, pause and reflect. Quietly reflect. Selah. True thankfulness in our lives will occur because of us experiencing Selah moments. Facebook, somebody just type in the comments, I need a Selah. I need a Selah. That's S-E-L-A-H. I didn't want nobody to put S-A-Y-L-A-H. Selah. No, it's Selah. S-E-L-A-H. I need a Selah. I need a Selah. I need a Selah. I need a pause and reflect moment. You got it? A pause and reflect moment. Let me see if I can help you uh, to understand what a pause and reflect moment is. A pause and reflect moment, um, you might understand it in this way. If I were to say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, that's a pause and reflect moment. Uh, you, you might recognize it or understand it in this way. As I look back over my life, I can see how the Lord has guided me. Or as I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that i that's a pause and reflect, but y'all got it? And true thankfulness in our lives comes out of our pause and reflect moments. Wow. Wow. Y'all got it? I said true thankfulness. Mm. Because, because watch this. Some of us know how to be thankful for a thing. Or thankful because of a thing. Right? But many of us fall short being thankful in a thing. And it is in a thing where I need to pause and reflect. Are we together? Are we together? All right. Um we so so this is my take on Selah. Because, excuse me, because Selah is a Hebraic word, 
Westerners don't really understand what that word is unless, unless we teach it, right? And so in our Western way of reading the Bible, we read that word. But if you notice what I did when I read it, when I said Selah, I waited a beat or two before I picked up the next word, right? But for, but for Hebrews who would read that, I don't know that they would read that word because it's an instruction. You know what I mean? And so perhaps, perhaps the more attuned we become here at St. Luke Baptist Church, the more attuned we come to uh, become with the scriptures, perhaps going forward when we read, when, you know, when we're reading, because it shows up, that word Selah shows up 70 plus times in the Psalms and even shows up three times in the book of Habakkuk. Whenever we're reading the scriptures and we see that word, we may not have to say it, but just get quiet in that moment. Now, I promise the folk that ain't been in Bible study going to look at you like, why did you stop reading? <laughs> Does that make sense? Or, or, or the real smart folk going to be like, you missed the word. Right? But because we in Bible study tonight, we understand that that word means to quietly reflect or to pause and reflect. Y'all got it? Selah, I need a Selah. That's a good question. That's a good question. All right. So true thankfulness, true thankfulness in our lives will occur because we have experienced Selah moments. Now, this is not um, this is not really a part of the the direction assignment. But let me give you a challenge this week. Over the next seven days, just do some personal surveying and write down somewhere your Selah moments. Y'all got it? Over the next seven days, just, just write down your, your, your moments of quiet reflection, your moments of pause and reflect. And remember, the, the appropriate response to pause and reflect is thank you, God. Y'all got it? All right. <clears throat> Let's keep moving forward. Here we go. We have your first fill-in tonight. The psalm begins with David's lament. Lament. The psalm begins with David's lament. Now, I promise you, it's a, it's a talk to me slide coming up right now. <laughs> All right. What is a lament? What is a lament? <clears throat> now, I can promise you. Can y'all see that? This this is not a lament. <laughs> what is a lament? Go ahead, Brother Alvin. Sorry. Okay. Brother Brother Alvin says something that you're sorry happened. I believe that's what he said. Lament, lament, lament. What is a lament? Grief. All right. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Daniel says grief. Sandy Reynolds says expression of sorrow or grief. Lament. What is a lament? Somebody else, anybody else want to jump in here? What is a lament? David expresses first his lament. Now get this. Go ahead, Mr. Pearl. I saw you on mute. Um, it could also be um expressing like pain. Okay, or go ahead. Pain or confusion. 
good. Pain, confusion. Gloria Morton said to cry. Dorothy uh, Roman, Reverend Roman said mourning or sorrow. And by the way, thank you for preaching on Sunday, Dorothy Roman. Uh, thank you for letting the Lord use you. Uh, watch this. Get this. I want you to get this tonight because we are talking about prayer, right? And so let me just throw this out for us tonight. Sometimes you're not going to have the opportunity or, you know, it's the, the, the moment can overtake you in a way that you can't do adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Y'all hear me tonight? Sometimes life can life on us so much that we have to immediately pour out our soul, pour out our issue, pour out our troubles to God. Y'all got me? Let me see if I can help you. Uh, uh, remember, well, let me, let me, let me do this. All right. This prayer begins very abruptly with Lord, right? That's the first word of Psalm three, Lord. David did not have time to go through a long liturgy because his life was at stake. I need you to catch it. Sometimes in your prayer life, you just going to have to get right to it with God. Lord, have mercy. Don't y'all remember Peter? Matthew chapter 14. I wish, I wish my brother was on right now. Man, did he preach a sermon out of Matthew chapter 14 uh, this weekend? Uh, Matthew 14, 30. When Peter began to sink, Right? He ain't have time to go. I remember how you turned water wine. You healed my mother-in-law. Uh, you know, watch you, watch you heal the man that was bent over. Uh, you, you touch, you know, you touch, you spoke a word, and J. Iris daughter recovered. He ain't have time to do all of that. When the Bible says when he saw that the wind was boisterous and that the storm was beating against the boat, he began to sink. And all he had time to say was, Lord, save me. Y'all got it? <clears throat> all David could say in this circumstance, this thing that he's dealing with now, all he had time to say was, Lord. Wow. Y'all got it? Sometimes it bees like that. Y'all got it? Matthew 14, 30. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. There were many foes around David, surrounding David. They had, in fact, driven him from the palace and were then surrounding him. Wow. That's tough. Absalom, his son, had been over time building up his support for overthrowing the kingdom from David. And, and, and as it is told, those numbers of his support increased every day, day by day, the Bible says, day by day. His, those numbers increased. Now, have you ever found yourself up against mounting negative circumstances or conditions? How did you feel during that time? All right, now, I'm going to get the ball rolling. Or at least that's my idea. That's my hope. There was uh, a time, well, well, first let me clear it. Do I have permission to share some personal stuff about us? Okay. All right. So I just want to make sure that I have permission from my wife to share some personal stuff about us. Um, there was a time when we were so financially strapped that we were seriously considering filing for bankruptcy. I mean, life was was pressing in on us so severely. Um, 
the the ministry work that we were doing in Frederick, Maryland had folded. Um, but the space that we were renting still had a year's lease remaining. And somebody had to pay it. The people whose name was on the lease. Their names just happened to be Pope. This was also during the time when the economy took a downturn and, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, the limited income that we had based on my wife's contractual work, the contract ended. To further exacerbate things, we found out that we were pregnant at, you know, 96 and 97 years old. Um, and it was tough. I mean, it, it was, it was tough. And I felt like in that season, I felt abandoned by people. I felt abandoned by God. To some extent, I felt abandoned by my family, to some extent. And it was quite difficult for me, for us. But the one thing that we said in all of that was, whatever we go through, we're going to go through it together. Uh, that, was, that was a saving grace. But that was that was um that was a challenging time. How about you? How about you? Have you ever found yourself up against mounting negative circumstances, conditions? How did you feel during that time? Y'all, if 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 you, I mean, and you don't have to share that much detail. Um, you can you can simply just say yes if you know if if that's the deal. But how how about you? How about you? I feel like I'm going through that time now. Okay. All right. All right. It's it's been rough. All right. But keep praying and keep pushing. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. So it's so so that is it's super important then that that you look for those thank you moments. You know what I mean? Be very, very intentional about that. And I'm I'm just, I'm just, you know, confession, good for your soul, bad for your reputation. Um, during my thing, I was so, I was so down on myself that I forgot that I needed to be thankful. You, you know what I mean? I forgot that I needed to tell God, thank you that we still were living in our home, that we still had food, that, watch this, that though we didn't have an income, God was making a way for us because I had friends who would call me and say, hey, man, come preach for me. You, you know what I mean? Be intentional. Be intentional about Finding those thank you spaces. That's good. Appreciate you, Thaddeus. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Have you ever found yourself up against mounting negative circumstances? How did you feel during that time? I'm trying to help us tonight. I'm trying to help us tonight. Can I share? Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> Let's get it, get in my husband's permission. And we, we, we also, uh, several years ago, um, went through a very, very difficult um, financial situation um, where we uh, we did lose our home. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, it, of course, you know, it's, it's, it's embarrassing. It's, it's very um, humiliating, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, but um, God, you know, um, made a way we, we, Although we lost our home, we we weren't out on the streets. No, um, my um Alvin's mother, my um, my mother-in-law, um, took us into her two-bedroom apartment. <laughs> so, 
Um, but um, we had a roof over our head. We, you know, didn't go without. And then, you know, God's own time and God's own way, he blessed us to be able to get another home. Yeah. Um, but um, it, it was very, very difficult. And um, it, do, it does, you know, it's a lot of why God, why God, why yes, us. Yes, you know, yes, we were, yes. We were, serving, we were serving in church. It wasn't like we were out there. Yes. In the world. We were serving in church. Yes. And we still continue to serve in church, even then going through the circumstance, you know. Yes. Yes. Um, but um, God, as, as he always does, proved himself faithful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister LaPearl. Thank you for sharing that, for being transparent. Sister Emily on Facebook Live says, when we were trying to get a house, seems like they went back into our credit so far about things we have forgotten about, but God stepped in. Thank you for sharing that. Angela Berry, yes, going through it now. Anxiety level is very high. Angela, let me encourage you, my sister. Let me encourage you to look for those thank you spaces. I'm not telling you that they, they're going to be a lot of them because of what we what you're experiencing. But please, please, please find your space. Find your thank you space and begin to offer that thanks back up to God. I appreciate you. Thank you for sharing that. That's very transparent. Sister Brenda, working in a hospital, Oh, in a hostile work environment, lost trust. Wow, wow, I see it. Sandy, struggle doing the economy tanking and getting a, a loan modification. Yeah, listen, listen, I need us to understand, David is very transparent when he writes in these Psalms, and I believe that that's a good thing because we need to be able to see and understand that just because we're God's people, we are not exempt from, from experiencing life. But because we are God's people, we have to have an informed way of caring for ourselves when we experience life. Are, are we together tonight? I, I Man, perhaps maybe I need to look at look at some professional Christian counselor. Maybe I can get a professional Christian counselor to come in and talk to us about doing, get this, trauma-informed self-care. Lord Jesus. My, my, my. That's that's ministry. All right, let's, let's move forward because our time is slipping away. Get this, not only were David's enemies increasing, but people were beginning to say that he didn't have no help. <coughs> they were saying stuff like, David, David is gone and he ain't coming back, Lord Jesus. Absalom done took over the throne. David done lost the kingdom. Help me hear somebody. But, hey, watch this. Psalm 30. This is really interesting here. Psalm 31, 13. I have heard the gossip of many. Terror is on every side. When they conspired against me, they plotted to take my life. Lord Jesus. Wait, that's not all. Psalm 38, 19, but my enemies are vigorous and powerful. Many hate me for no reason. Mm -hmm. Psalm 55, 18, though many are against me, he will redeem me from my battle unharmed. I love that verse. Whew. Psalm 69, verse 4, those who hate me without cause are more numerous than the hairs of my head. My deceitful enemies who would destroy me are powerful. Though I did not steal, I must repay. Wow. These are all expressions of what David has experienced as it relates, watch this, to being discouraged. There's a there's an excuse me. There's an entire psalm, Psalm 13. I want to encourage you to go and read Psalm 13. It is an entire psalm devoted to David's discouragement. Whew. 
they were saying that God had abandoned David. They were saying that God had abandoned David. They were saying that God had abandoned David. One more time. They were saying that God had abandoned David. I want to encourage you, my brother, my sister. I want to encourage you. Do not give ear to those who would project upon you negativity in your life. Do not give ear to them. Don't trust what they're saying. Though, listen, though, though the whole community say it, Lord Jesus, though the whole community say it, don't you dare trust it. They were saying that God had abandoned David. Don't let anybody speak that kind of pronouncement over your life. Are we together tonight? Facebook, y'all quiet. Even in the face of this daunting, taunting experience, David found comfort in God's character. Mm -hmm. Look at verse three. David says, and I want to use the very familiar language of the King James Version. Some of you might recognize this verse. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. Lord, have mercy. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's one of my verses right there. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Listen, see that last part right there? The lifter up of my head. I want you to take those words to heart to all of you who are, you know, who share um, Angela, Angela Berry. Angela, he is the lifter up, Lord Jesus, of your head. I want you to. Listen, I want you to take ownership of that. Lord, you are the lifter up of my head. When that anxiety rises up, Lord, you are the lifter up of my head. Speak that word of God over your anxiety. Speak that word of God over your depression. Speak that word of God over uh, your anger. Speak that word of God over your worry. God, you are the lifter up of my head. Now watch this. Say it until you believe it. Lord Jesus. Y'all miss that. Y'all missed that. Hey, Facebook, somebody type that in the in the comments. Say it until you believe it. Lord, you are the lifter up of my head. Say it until you believe it. You are the lifter up of my head. I know what I'm feeling in this moment, but Lord, you are the lifter up of my head. I know what the condition is around me, but you are the lifter up of my head. I know what the doctor's diagnosis is, but you are the lifter up of my head. My, 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 my. Y'all excuse me, I'm happy now. Say it until you believe it. You are the lifter up. Wow. But you, Lord, are a shield for me. My glory. You lift up my head. Wow. You got to say it until you believe it. 
What might the metaphorical use of the shield represent for David? He says, Lord, you are a shield for me. What might that represent for David? A shield, protection. Protection. What would you say, Andrew? Protect. Okay. So, so who was that on Facebook Live? Who I mean, on uh, on Zoom. Was that you, Mr. Pearl? Yeah, I said protection also. Protection. Yeah. All right. Protection. Protection. He says, get this. He says, Lord, you are a shield for me. A shield for me. A shield for me. What does a shield do? I mean, what's what's the use? It, it actually is a protection used by soldiers in, in battle, um, especially protecting the heart, um, uh, chest areas, um, just sort of it, it um, sort of wards off like um, attacking swords. That's how a Roman soldier used a shield. Yeah. So let me metaphorically. Let me, <laughs> let, let me let me say something about the use of a shield. Right. The use of a shield works wonders for an individual, okay? But when you have a platoon, right? A platoon of people who are carrying shields, right? Some can hold their shields out front to create a line of protection out front. But then those behind may hold their shields up to grant protection overhead. Are, are we together? So that together, did y'all catch that? Together, we help defend each other. Y'all got it? I'm curious, how many of us are willing to be shield bearers at St. Luke Baptist Church? Lord have mercy. See, some people think that it's the pastor's responsibility only to hold up a shield. Listen, the pastor's shield by himself is only going to protect him. But if we learn how to put our shields together, Lord Jesus, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen right now. <laughs> if we learn how to hold our shields up together, Lord Jesus, and watch this, watch this. David says, Lord, you are a shield for me. Which suggests that God has the ability to protect him in ways that he cannot protect himself, even with his own shield in his hand. Are we together tonight? Pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, well, kind of what you were alluding to, that um, that maybe his faith in God would represent, you know, David Shield. Very good, Daniel. Very good. Astute observation, young grasshopper. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let's let's drive forward because we're almost out of time. Uh, here we go. David is expressing that despite the increasing numbers and the violent taunts of his enemies, God was still the true source of his protection. God was still, despite what his experience was in that moment, God was still the source of his protection. Are you getting this tonight?
I want you to cover yourself in Psalm 3, verse 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up, thank you, of my head. Y'all got it? Look, Psalm 18, 3, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock where I seek refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Now, I want you to, if, if you're not too spiritual, I want you to underline in that verse every word that references God's protection. Psalm 18.3. I want you to underline Every underline, highlight every word that refers to God's protection. Let me read it again. The Lord is my rock. Somebody write that word in the comments on Facebook Live. Rock. My fortress. Somebody put that in the comments. My deliverer. Put that in the comments. Again, he says, my rock where I seek refuge. Put that in the comments. My shield. Put that in the comments. Horn of my salvation. Put that in the comments. Stronghold. Put that in the comments. What does Solomon say in Proverbs? He says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and find safety. Y'all got it? Yeah. Oh, is it two? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I apologize. I had the wrong verse up there. 18 2. 18 2. Thank y'all. Good looking out. Go back to the top. Sorry about that, y'all. Yeah. There we go. All right. So Psalm 18, 2. I had the wrong verse up there. All right, so y'all got it. Psalm 3320, we wait for the Lord. He is our help and shield. We wait for the Lord. He is our help and shield. And I love this right here. Psalm 119, verse 114. You are my shelter and my shield, I put my hope in your word. Wow. Wow. You are my hope and my shield. I put my hope in your word. One more slide and I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it quiz for tonight. Here it is. The words lift up my head or the lifter up of my head express restoration to dignity and position. The words lifts up my head or lifter up of my head express restoration to dignity and position. Discouragement. Get this. Knocks us off our square. 
to use a colloquialism. Discouragement shifts us out of our position. Discouragement can, as was expressed um, by several people tonight, discouragement can cause us to feel as, as though we have lost our dignity. But our affirmation is, you, Lord, <laughs> are a shield for me. My glory and the lifter up of my head. Those words literally mean you've restored me to dignity and put me back in my position. Wow. 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 All right. I got I'm gonna I'm gonna quit there because cause cause our time is up. Uh questions, comments, observations before we close tonight. Questions, comments, observations. Hope you were blessed by our lesson tonight. We will pick up, uh, we'll pick up at verse um three again on next week and continue to push through. Uh thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Uh appreciate your prayers for us as we were away this weekend. Uh want to tell you that we had such a refreshing time um with our um for lack of a better word, I will call them our covenant uh partner couple. Um uh, Bishop and, and Lady Gross there in Nightdale, North Carolina. Uh, we had a tremendous time uh, and are grateful to be back. We look forward to seeing you with us uh, on next Wednesday, on next Wednesday, next Wednesday. Uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, back for another installment of On the Move to Discipleship. Um the only affirmation that I'm giving us tonight is Psalm 3, 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. God, thank you for that tonight. Bless us now as we prepare to leave from this place. Thank you for our virtual family tonight. Allow your word to massage our hearts. And I pray, Father, for each person tonight who may be in the depths of discouragement. I pray that your word would find them in that space, that they might uh, find uh, the opportunity uh, and the space to have a thank you moment. Thank you because you are a shield for us. Thank you because you are our glory. Thank you because you are the lifter up of our heads. Keep us now as we leave this place and protect us. Give us safe passage as we return home. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everybody. Good night, everybody. Don't forget, you got to say it until you believe it. All right, I'm quitting. I'm done.